<laughs> Christmas is the most celebrated holiday by people all over the world, and there's a reason for that. Central to the story of Christmas is the fact that the miracle of Christ's birth brought hope into a world in despair. The world is dark, and it's getting darker every yeah. day, but the message of Christmas is a beacon of light for all mankind. Let's celebrate the goodness of God together on this special Christmas edition of Lifeline Today. Oh, welcome to a special edition of Lifeline Today, Joan. We're yes. celebrating the Christmas season. It's always a great time of the year because you're near the end of our calendar mm -hmm. year. And it gives you time to reflect on the goodness of God. It's mm -hmm. been a wonderful year for us. So many things have happened, Joan. But yeah. the most important is that we ended up uh, buying our building. And yes, we uh, did. we're still going a little further, but uh, <laughs> that's a miracle. It is a miracle. And Dick, I just want to first of all say to those of you at home that are tuned into this program, Merry Christmas to you and to all of your family. And uh, Dick and I are just so blessed to be able to come into your homes at this time of year and be a part of celebrating Jesus together. Dick, we've got a great program lined up today. Yeah. Uh, we've got Ryan and Alyssa, our son, in law and daughter going to sing away in a manger and also you're going to be doing such a good teaching on the hope for the world yeah jesus is the hope of the world and there are some amazing scriptures about that joan uh that talk about that we were in, uh, living without hope in yeah. darkness you know yes. until the lord came yeah, yeah this is always a, a very special program we're also going to invite you to prepare to have communion with us mm -hmm. because we will be doing that later and what better way to celebrate christmas yeah i know normally communion doesn't connect <laughs> with many people's way of thinking but because it's more about the death and resurrection of christ but not to me because he's no. the gift He's the gift of eternal life. He is and the gift for God so loved the world yeah. that he gave his only begotten son. And, and we need to celebrate that, Dick, because the coming of Christ was the gift. Yeah. Right? And you know what? This is the thing. You honor, mm -hmm. if you're really going to celebrate Christmas, you honor what Jesus Christ has done yeah, for us. Right. And so we have eternal life because of him. Yes, we and do. And so this is why it's probably one of the most wonderful times of the year yeah. to celebrate the wonderful news of Jesus Christ, to show him our love and adoration yeah. and our appreciation, of course, and to show your, our appreciation for you as well. Let's yeah. go to this song right now. No 
crib for a bed. The little Lord Jesus laid down his sweet head. The stars in the sky looked down where he lay. The little Lord Jesus asleep. Thank you, Ryan and Alyssa. And for many of you, you know that's our daughter and son-in-law. And uh, yeah. they've done our Christmas specials for many, many years, haven't yeah. they, Joan? You know, we're talking about Jesus is the hope of the world. And uh, that cannot be overstated. It mm -hmm. just simply cannot be overstated. It is central to the gospel. And he is the hope of the world. Surveys are telling us today that hopelessness has become an epidemic in our society. Wow and that a high percentage of people feel like their life has absolutely no purpose. Now, for those of you and I, uh, like yourselves and myself and Joan, and we know the Lord Jesus Christ. That is so opposite of what we know to be true. We have a purpose. But Jesus came, and he came at a time when the world was hopeless. It says in Ephesians chapter 2 and 11 and verse 12, this is Paul saying that, remember that you were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, promise, having no hope and without God in the world. And now in Christ Jesus, you who were once far off have been brought near by the blood of Jesus Christ. These words are an amazing declaration that God bridged the gap of a hopeless people through the blood of Jesus Christ, through the sacrifice of his only son to bring us into the family of God and to give us a reason for living, a hope. Now, I don't know who you are and if you're watching this and you feel like, well, I don't have any specific hope. Yes, you do. Because this life is only a very, very small fraction of the life that you will live for eternity. This is just a small blink of the eye. And so many put so much, Joan, into this day and hour, what we're doing in this life. But this life passes by so quickly. You know, you know when you're 19 or 20, you know, you look ahead and you go, oh, my goodness. You know, you got all the time in the world. That's so far away. Before you know it, that time is gone. Mm -hmm. And then you're facing, well, you're, you're older, but you're also facing eternity. Thank God. Thank God Jesus gave us hope that we live beyond this present life. We live for every day with hope in the Lord Jesus. Everything that is done in this world is done through hope. That was what Martin Luther, Luther said. Everything done in this world, anytime something positive takes place in the world, we find that there's someone who has hope for a better day, a better future, a better tomorrow. But if this is all there is, this world, and that's the only hope you have, that's it. And that, that's the common belief, that the natural world is all there is. There is no spiritual realm. There is no eternity. They just believe this is it, and that you live one life. Then this is the best you can hope for. This is it, the best you can get right now. If you, and, and if you think about that, that could be very disappointing. You know, that's why there's a common expression called YOLO, Y-O-L-O. And it means you only live once. Wow. But that's not true. You live forever. That's just not true. We live forever. Whether you live in eternity with Christ or without him, you live forever. But Romans 5, 8 says, but God demonstrates his love to us and that he, uh, that while we were yet still sinners, Christ died for us. I think about that. What a measure of love. It says while we were beyond hope, we were in sin. Yet he extended himself, died with his own precious blood shed on the cross for us so that we might live for eternity. First John 1 John 1.9 says, This is the love of God that was manifested towards us, that God has sent his only begotten Son into the world that we might live through him. 
Beloved, every breath we take, and this says this in uh, Acts chapter 17, is that in him we live and move and have our being. That means every breath we take is sustained by Jesus Christ, sustained by God who created us. He has given us a reason to live. He's given us hope in this world. Hope is the, comes from one source only, and that is from the creator of the universe, and the creator of you and me. That is the only source of hope. He's the only one that lives in eternity, eternity past, eternity future, and he invites us to live with us, with him. Jeremiah 29, 11 is interesting because Jeremiah the, is called the weeping prophet, and he is probably prophesying to one of the most lowest states of the people of Israel. They had, for generations, rebelled against God, served other idols. They uh, disobeyed him in, over and over again. And this process went on for many, many decades, many years. And uh, so it's at a very low point. And Jeremiah, the weeping prophet, begins to prophesy about judgment. But notice some of these things that he said, even in his book. Jeremiah 29, 11 says, For I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord, plans for welfare and not for evil, to give you a future and hope. So God had planned, even in the lowest point of the nation of Israel, at their deepest and darkest time, he has saw a plan for their future. So I don't know who you are today who may be experiencing depression and darkness, but I'm sure it's not as negative and as horrible as what was facing the Jews in Jeremiah's day. And even in that moment, God said, I have a plan for you. There's a reason and a hope. So God is the creator of, who is the, of the universe, is the source of hope for us. And something I want to declare to you, God always has a good plan for your life. He always has something in your future. And one of the things that the enemy will do is try to steal hope from you. Try to live, cause you to live hopeless, feeling as though there's no reason to live. And that's why some people actually do take their lives. And, uh, and that is because they see no option. But in Christ, we always have a better day tomorrow. We always have a hope for the future. So God sent his only begotten son that we might have a future. John 3.16, which we all can quote, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Well, you know what? I think the first memory verse any one of us learn is John 3, 16 and 17. But Christ has given us hope and God so loved the world. That's why we are we're filled with hope. There is someone that says he loves us and he gave himself for us. Think of that. And I often, when I read about Jesus on the cross, the horrific torture that he endured, that he was doing it and he didn't have to. He could have stopped it, interrupted it at any moment. He was the creator of the universe, yet he did not. He did it because he loved us and he wanted to save us and give us a future. We might have temporary disappointment, but one thing we always have is eternal hope. We have eternal hope. I think about this. Uh, I don't want to say my age because okay. Joan looks like she's only a young girl, so I can't say my <laughs> age. But uh, I will tell you this, the more years that go by, the more you realize just how rich that hope is, how blessed it is in all of our lives. First Peter 1 and verse 13 says this, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his abundant mercy has begotten us, again, to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And by the way, that's the guarantee of our hope, is that Jesus Christ rose from the dead. And it was three days. Even Jewish tradition said that they weren't, you know, illegally dead until three days after your passing. And they did that. That was just a tradition at the time. Jesus was in the grave for three days, three nights. And then he rose from the dead and came to life so that we might live as well. Hope is the foundation of faith that leads to achievement. 
Nothing can be done without hope and with confidence. And I pray that as we end this year and step into the next, and we look at all the things going on around us globally, and there's some very serious things going on, things that could cause fear and anxiety, and I'm sure many of you have experienced that. Yet, we have hope. We have hope because we have a, a hope in something far greater than this world. We know that one day this world will disappear at the word of the Lord, and we will be with him forever. So we have hope in this time, great hope, and I pray that for you. If you're living in despair, we may pray, hope will invade your soul. He that lives in hopes dances without music was a famous quote by George Herbert. Now, he who lives with hope dances without music. We have a reason to live and we live our lives better. I want to invite you at this time to prepare. We're going to receive communion together, Joan. Mm. Communion is, uh, it, it says this in scripture, as often as you do this, you declare the Lord's death until he comes. What that word means is declare, means yeah. to prophesy or to decree. Mm -hmm. And when we do this today, and I think it's appropriate at Christmas to receive communion because the hope of the world came into the world. That's what we celebrate. But we're declaring over our life and we're declaring over the coming year that Jesus Christ is our hope and he has right. his and our lives in his control. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. So if you have your uh, uh, elements, we have some elements here. And uh, I want to join with you as we receive communion together. Communion is such a powerful time of affirmation. The Bible says that Jesus Christ took the bread after the supper and when he had given thanks he said this is my body which is broken for you. Take, eat and, and in that sense he was saying we become a part of him and we join together with him but we celebrate the body of Christ but there's something else this bread represents in their future we have a resurrected body. That's right. The older you get, the better you think that's a, <laughs> don't you? Aren't you glad for that? I mean, no matter what your age is, you will have a perfect body for eternity. Father, I thank you for the broken you, body Lord. of Christ. And we receive this bread today thank you, Jesus. as a covenant token of the resurrection and of the gift of eternal life for thank us you. in Jesus name. In Jesus Amen. name. Amen. says that after supper, he took the cup and he mentioned that this cup was a New Testament or New Covenant in his blood. He hadn't died yet. He was about to. But he did say and did command that they should do this like we are today, receiving communion. And Paul repeated these words to the Corinthian. As often as you do this, he said, as often as you do it, there's no restriction. No. You can take it as often as you wish. But when you do, you make sure that you take it in the spirit that declares the sovereignty of Jesus Christ over your life, over your family, over your circumstances, over every situation and for eternity. So today, Lord, I speak the power Thank of the blood Lord. of Jesus over those who are that precious one that is joining with us today through television. We just speak your favor and blessing you, through the shed blood of Jesus Christ. What a rich inheritance we have. Thank you, Lord. What a blessing we have knowing that we have eternal hope mm -hmm. through the Lord Jesus. Thank you, we Jesus. We now receive this cup in the mighty and powerful name of Jesus. Let's receive together. Father, I just pray Thank you, that Lord. in times like this, your healing flows into people's lives. Yes, Lord. And I just sense I'm praying for a person who has deep emotional pain from mm. this past year. You have experienced major, major loss. And the Lord is going to fill Thank that you, vacuum. He's going to fill that void. Mm. He's going to heal you from that brokenness and disappointment. And I just release healing in the physical body for someone with tormenting headaches. Thank I just you, command Lord. healing Holy into the area of your body through yes, the Lord. covenant of Jesus Thank Christ, you, Lord our Lord Jesus. and Savior. Amen. Amen. Help change the spiritual climate of Canada by becoming a monthly partner with Lifeline Today. All donors will receive this year's Lifeline Today scripture bookmark, a reminder that you stand together with Dick and Joan for Canada. 
pledge your support of $25 a month and receive the Lifeline Today coffee mug, specifically designed for partners of the ministry. Partner at $50 a month and receive as our thank you this beautiful teal large print copy of the Passion New Testament, including the Psalms, Proverbs, and Song of Solomon. As you read it, experience the scriptures coming to life in a new and powerful way. Lifeline Today would also like to send you this special communion set to enable you to take communion in your home, with your family, or with Dick and Joan during communion broadcasts. It's our thank you gift to you for your faith-filled partnership of $100 a month. Your tax-deductible donation will empower this ministry to release the prophetic voice of God across our nation. Call today and say yes to becoming a partner with Dick and Joan. Just as the people were waiting for the promise of a Messiah to come, we are also given promises by God that we might still be waiting to see fulfilled. Philippians 1, 6 says, Being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Is there a promise given to you by God that you're still waiting to see fulfilled? We'd love to stand in prayer with you for your breakthrough. Give us a call here at the Lifeline Today Prayer Center. Our number is 403-942-0123 or email us at prayercenter at dickandjoan.com. You know, Joan, they tell us that uh, Christmas time is, uh, for many, the most depressing time of the year. Because people are lonely, Dick. There's yeah. so many people that are lonely. And if you're at home today and you're watching this program and you're feeling lonely, we want you to know this. You are part of the Lifeline family with Dick and Joan. Never feel alone. Of course, you can always pray, uh, call our prayer center and people will be there. They'll lift up the phone and pray for you. But Dick, I just want us today to pray for every person who's watching for families that are getting together at Christmas, for those who are alone and maybe have nowhere to go, that the grace of God would come upon them. Can we do that? Yes. Father, I just thank you and we lift up right now every person who is watching this program. And Lord, we know that Christmas is such a wonderful time for so many, but for others, for families who don't get together very often, for for families who have family members that they have odds against or unforgiveness between them, Father, and then there's the ones that are alone. Lord, it's not the most happy time, but we pray that in the midst of everything going on, that your presence would settle upon them. And Lord, that you would let them know, even what you said in the, in the word of God, I will never leave you or forsake you. They have a Jesus. They have a friend. He's called the friend mm. in the Bible. They have a friend. And so Father, I just pray right now that you would touch them in Jesus' name. Touch them, Lord. Make them know that they're not alone in the name of Jesus. Just want to really encourage those at home because you need to know that the presence of God is with you. And some people misunderstand the presence of God as emotion or mm -hmm. a feeling, but it's not. It's a fact. It's a truth. And he is with you at all times. And mm -hmm. if you acknowledge that, you're going to even experience how his presence is with you. I was just thinking about what David said, the writer of the Psalms, and he said, even if I make my bed in hell, or he said Sheol, <laughs> that's the grave. He yeah. said, even there, you are there. Yeah. He said, it, and so he said, I, he affirmed the presence of God. I'm gonna ask you to affirm the presence of God mm -hmm. in your life. Affirm it through this season of Christmas. And uh, I know it's easy sometimes to look at what we don't have, but, that's human nature too. Mm -hmm. But celebrate what you do have. Yes, amen. And you do have Jesus. Mm -hmm. You do have his presence. You have his promises. His promises are more powerful. And even this is what scripture says, heaven and earth will pass away. Think of that, heaven yeah. and earth, everything will pass away, but my word will never pass away. That's right. So he is affirming your love for you today. 
Dick, as, you, as I was praying, I just really felt in my spirit as I was praying for families who weren't getting together because there were, you know, things between them and, and uh, irreconcilable mm. differences, things that you thought in your heart are irreconcilable. I just want to say this to you and, and I want to pray. Father, let this be a time when families get together that the, the grace of God is just released in the midst of the families and family members, friends, Father God, that have been estranged from one another. Let the grace of God be released, Father. And I thank you, Father, for reconciliation during this season. Let it be a great time of reconciliation, we pray mm -hmm. in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 And you know, that is often the case. Families yeah. come home, they gather together. And, uh, you know, the, you hear the stories of family gatherings that end up in arguments. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, just take a, th if they're coming to your home, take authority over that and say, the atmosphere in my home will be a fellowship of joy, Amen. of peace, communion with one another. Amen. It doesn't have to be in any other way. And, uh, and we just encourage those who are, are going to spend Christmas alone. That is, uh, that is difficult, isn't mm -hmm. it, Joan? It is. And uh, so I just want to speak a blessing over you. That, yeah. you know, uh, there's someone who says, I will never forsake you. Yeah, I'll yeah. never leave you alone. There's someone, you know, he says, if everyone forsakes you, there's one that will not forsake yeah. you. And that his name is Jesus Christ, through the person of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Would you receive the presence of the Holy Spirit as I pray that for you? Holy Spirit, I release you to these who are spending Christmas alone for one reason or another, mm -hmm. maybe they're institutionalized, maybe there's some other reason, we just release your grace through the person of Holy Spirit to be with them, to comfort them and to strengthen them wherever they are mm -hmm. in Jesus' name. I just wanna tell you that I feel a promise in my heart that some people are hoping to see a child wow. who, you know, like a prodigal perhaps, yeah come home this Christmas. <laughs> and uh, I just want to agree with you. I say, yes, I agree with you. And we pray that that individual, God will make a way. Maybe yes, it's not right. a prodigal, maybe it's circumstantial, Yes. but God will make a way and that precious one will come home for Christmas and, and spend time with the family. And when they do, Dick, it'll be a time of amazing celebration Amen. and joy. Amen. Well, Joan and I want to tell you that we love you and appreciate you so much. We wouldn't be here without you. That's right. And you empower us, not in just your finances, but in your prayers and giving. We just so appreciate it. We want to wish you a very, very Merry Christmas. Yeah. We love you with all our hearts and we pray <laughs> The 2024 yeah. will be the best year ever, and Canada Amen. will be saved. Amen. This program is supported by viewers like you, and we thank you for partnering with us. We want to hear from you. Send us your prayer requests, praise reports, and comments about the program. To watch past episodes, learn about the ministry, or contact us, visit our website at dickandjoan.com. You can also find us on Facebook at Lifeline Today with Dick and Joan and on our YouTube channel, Dick and Joan TV.